So it was actually my 10th birthday that they announced this car. Back in 1997, BMW announced the E46 3 Series. And at that age, of course, you are massively impressionable. For that reason, I think this car, I really do have a soft spot for it. It's, a, it's quite a special car in my mind. And although, in reality, it was a super common car and they sold absolutely loads of them, they ended up outselling the Mondeo, which was, you know, the car of the 90s. This uh, 3 Series has kind of come to define BMW for me, really. If I think of BMW, I'm pretty sure that an E46 pops into my head. And it's for good reason, because first of all, it's got a straight six up front, and that is a perfect BMW engine configuration. They, they make this such sonorous sound. It's the, it's the right shape. It's a big straight line sticking out the front of the car. It's pointing the right way, which is forwards, because that means, of course, this car is rear wheel drive. And again, that is what a BMW should be. And then the car is 50-50 weight distribution, a super important thing when it comes to building a car that handles well. And that's something that BMW always take pride in. And then the interior, it's got a dashboard that's angled towards you. It's got a very serious set of dials in front. The whole car just feels like it was designed to be good to drive. And of course, it is. The other thing is that it's actually a very uh, comfortable, relaxing, quiet, refined car as well. So BMW really do know how to uh, build a car that does most things well. So the E90, which replaced this car in the mid-2000s, that was famously, or infamously, infamously, uh, designed by Chris Bangle. He got a bit of stick for the way he designed those cars in the, in the mid-2000s. But what I didn't realise is that he actually designed this car as well, where he was in charge of uh, the design team for the E46. And, and I think he actually did a really good job with this car. It's uh, a very much a sort of 90s shape, but it's a very pretty car, it's very rounded, and although I think the design actually has dated now, it's only benefited the car in the sense that it now feels a bit more like a classic. And when I see them, I, I think, oh, E46, yeah, that's a, a, a classic special looking car now. There was also a bunch of different body styles that you could get. This is the saloon car, which is what the, the bread and butter main one was. But then of course you had the little BMW compact, uh, three series compact, which had a very strange looking face and a hatchback. It was a little bit smaller. That still had rear wheel drive and it was still a proper, uh, based on the E46 chassis. You also had the coupe version of this car, which was a really good looking car, actually. Um, very much a very rounded 90s, uh, pretty coupe. And it's probably the one that I would go for if I was looking for one of these. Then you had the convertible version of that, which is a very well insulated, comfortable, refined car as well. And then you had the wagon, which was uh, a highly practical estate car. So there really was a, a version of this car for everyone. So this car is the 325i, which is uh, the artist formerly known as the 323i. They basically sold it as a 323 up until about 2000, and then they changed it to a 325, but in both cases it's a 2.5 litre engine. Oh, 0 to 60 is dispatched in what feels like, you know, very quickly. I'm not thrown back into my seat, but the performance is just linear, it just uh, keeps on going, and I feel like it would keep on going up to silly speeds. It makes a glorious noise. It's not like a, a really fast car, but it's got a lot of torque. The gearbox can be sat in a very low RPM, and it, and it means that this car can just sort of very much uh, cruise around very effortless, effortlessly and very quietly. But the engine kind of purrs. It's like a, it's like a big cat. The, the range of engines was massive, so you know you went from like uh, the 316 right up to uh, the 330, and of course after that was the M3, which was an absolute total different uh, car really. I mean it was based on the same chassis and the same same body shell and everything, but that had uh, over 300 horsepower and was a proper performance car. The automatic. Now this is the Steptronic, so it means that you can pick what gear you want you're using the gear stick down here. I'm going to change down, so I'm going to do it now, and now it's changed. So it's obviously not super fast at, at changing, but that, that really does go for any of these old-fashioned, what they call slushmatic torque converter gearboxes. They are very good at being smooth and very good at just adding to that luxury air of a car, but they're not the ultimate driving gearbox. So manual is there if you want um, a car that's 
more entertaining. So at higher speeds now, like uh, you know, 60 miles an hour, it's still very quiet in here. It, it, it's uh, very much a, a car you could use on the motorway, and it feels planted. It just feels like very stable. You know, I mean, it's obviously something that, that German cars have to be because of the high speeds that they're doing on their autobahn. The other good thing about this car and running it as a as a sort of modern classic is that. It's, it's a very safe car, it's got um, airbags all the way around, like front, side and curtain airbags and that's standard on all, all E46s. And of course it also has ABS and traction control, which you know is pretty handy when uh, you end up driving these cars like they want to be driven. You need those uh, features to keep you safe. Well, what's it like in the back of the E46? Oh mate, yeah, it's, uh, it's great back here. I've got enough legroom behind you and I've got plenty of headroom as well. It's definitely a car that I wouldn't mind being chauffeured around in because these seats are pretty comfortable. What have I got? I've got electric windows in the back. And also, I've got a couple of uh, extra things to tell you. One is that this car was available as four-wheel drive, um, all-wheel drive. Any of the cars that were like, uh, had an X in the name, like 325XI or the 330XI. And I've got a little uh, interesting fact for you. The E numbers in the BMW, so this is the E46, uh, the E is um, for Entwicklung, which means development in German. Of course, once they'd run out of E numbers to use, they then went up to F and G and stuff, and that basically made no sense anymore. And the, uh, the boot size is pretty good in this car, 440 litres, whatever that means, but it's uh, only slightly less than a, a brand new uh, BMW 3 Series you'd buy today. I found an advert for this car. It was a, a guy with um, like a ball bearing maze and they were using the car to very quickly change direction and, and force the ball bearing through the maze. And, it, and it, yeah, it was obviously just saying that this car is like a very sharp uh, car to drive, very clinical and, and, and direct. Compared to modern BMWs, the whole car is just a little bit softer around the edges. It does feel its age in some ways. It certainly is better than uh, most cars you could buy at the time. You might be thinking, well, it's got a massive two and a half litre straight six engine up front. The fuel economy is going to be pretty bad. Well, to be honest, it's not too bad. Almost 40 mpg on a run with this car, if you're careful. And, uh, you know, it might average sort of 30 odd with uh, normal driving. Obviously, if you want a, an economical E46, then there was a two litre diesel, the 320D. And the diesel engines back then were not hampered with all the sort of emissions stuff and rubbish now, like uh, DPFs and... Um, Add blue and all that rubbish. Back in the day when these cars were new, it must have been real good fun to spec them up because the the range of uh, sort of engines and, and trim levels and and everything that was available on these cars was was so huge, and you could really sort of tailor the car to what you wanted from it. Oh, you wanted a sporty car? Well, whack a straight six up front, put a manual gearbox in, spec it in black. You know, get all the carbon fibre trim, get all the black leather, and you've got this like sporty mean machine. But then at the same time, you could be like, oh, you know what, I'm gonna, gonna put some wood trim in, I'm gonna give it maybe a, a diesel engine so I can travel a uh, long distance very affordably. I'll put an automatic gearbox in it so that it's smooth and it's comfortable. Then you could uh, decide what sort of equipment level you want on it. And obviously BMW always been very good at, at uh, getting the most out of you for extra equipment and things. Cause the basic E46 was unfortunately very basic, you know, like they hardly gave you anything as standard, but Obviously you could spec it up with all sorts of things like uh, heated electric seats and uh, dual zone climate control, cruise control, automatic wipers, automatic headlights, uh, it's got auto dim rear view mirror, all these different things that you know were pretty futuristic at the time. You could get everything on this car, uh, but you did have to pay for it. I think with older cars like this, and especially complicated old German cars, people get a little bit scared when it comes to buying them in terms of reliability. Because, you know, you hear a lot of horror stories about cars like this. Because these cars are, you know, could be 20 to 25 years old, the range of quality that you're going to get in one of these, depending on how it's been looked after, is massive. So you could find a car that's absolutely perfect, pristine, been looked after, it's got like serviced every year, every part has been replaced that needs replacing. And you'll have to pay for that car. It's not going to be mega cheap, but at the same time, if, you, if you're looking for one of these like 325s or, or whatever, it's not going to also be a huge amount of money. Then, of course, you've got the opposite of that, which is, is the cars that, you know, nothing's been replaced on them, they've never been serviced, and you buy that car and you get it for like 1,500 quid or something, and then it starts going wrong. Inevitably, it's 
a car that will annoy you and everything will break on it. And then of course you're gonna go, oh, these old German cars, they're not, not built well. And it's like, well, they're built like every other car. They need to be looked after. Now I would say that this car is a good example of a car that's really been looked after and it feels like everything in it is working. The engine's sweet as a nut. I mean, it's done 116,000 miles, which is obviously low mileage for a car this age. But this car, by the way, is for sale if you're interested. Um, I'll put a link in the description below until it's sold. So that's the E46 3 Series. It, it really is a great example of a, of a BMW and they're becoming more of a classic every day. Um, and if you can get your hands on a, a good condition one, then it's a modern classic that you know you can probably afford to run and, and keep and drive every day. So I'm a fan of this car and uh, I'm really impressed with its sort of all-round capabilities. So uh, yeah, a big thanks to Ben for coming up and, and bringing this car to the channel and to you guys for watching. Be sure to uh, click up there for a review on another random car and uh, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.